you buy a car that it does not have the hardware necessary for full self-driving, it's like buying a horse. Expect to be feature complete with, uh, with self-driving sometime later this year. It'll be able to do basically anything just with software upgrades, which is pretty cool. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has told investors that self-driving technology will one day turn his company into a juggernaut with a $500 billion market cap. And owners' vehicles will dramatically increase in value with autonomous capabilities. The upgrading of the fleet to full self-driving, essentially with an over-the-air software update, I mean, may go down as the, the, the biggest asset value increase in history. During a 2019 Autonomy Day, Musk said Tesla expected to have one million vehicles on the road by the end of 2020 that could function as robo-taxis. I feel very confident predicting uh, autonomous robo-taxis for Tesla next year. But the timing of the release keeps changing. You know, I think we could see robo-taxis in operation with the network fleet next year. It's not in all markets, but in some. Halfway through 2020, it's still unclear whether Musk's robo-taxi dream will become a reality. And while Tesla's full self-driving features are loved by some, they're seen as unfit for public roadways by others. It does have some features that mimic self-driving capability, but uh, when compared to what uh, people think of as a self-driving car, it does not have near the capabilities of a full self-driving vehicle. At first, Tesla called its autonomous features autopilot, but through the years, it segmented those features into products known as enhanced autopilot and full self-driving. Musk continues to insist that full self-driving is coming soon, but some experts disagree. Fully driverless cars are something that is one of the hardest things humans have ever tried to take on. We've even seen some reckless drivers who misinterpret the, the vehicle's capability. So it's very, very important that the consumers understand the limit of these systems, especially today, that these are driver assistance systems and they're not automation. It's a big dream. I don't, I, it wasn't part of Tesla's like thing that brought me there. It wasn't part of anything Tesla for a while and it became the thing that Tesla does. Tesla Autopilot is an assisted driving system. In industry parlance, we would call it an advanced safety system. Autopilot is a level two driving system. It is not autonomous. It assists you with the basic tasks of driving under certain conditions. It started in 2013 when Musk announced Autopilot for the Model S. When I first started at Tesla, Autopilot was this very new concept for them was something that wasn't in their branding when I bought my car in 2012 at all. I've never felt that that was a core part of Tesla Autopilot, um, but it has become that now. Autopilot was announced by Elon Musk on a conference call about over-the-air update that they were going to do. And at the time he said, we're going to have a system that allows you essentially to drive hands-free from San Francisco to Seattle. In less than a year, uh, you'll be able to go from highway on-ramp to highway exit without touching any controls. By November 2015, Tesla was ramping up hiring for the autopilot team. In 2016, Tesla was promising all cars in production would include full self-driving hardware. Three years later, at the company's first Autonomy Day presentation for shareholders, Tesla showcased a proprietary chip it designed to enable full self-driving that would be in all of its vehicles moving forward. We expect to be feature complete in self-driving this year, um, and we expect uh, to be confident enough from our standpoint to say that w we think people do not need to touch the wheel, look out of the window sometime probably around, I don't know, second quarter of next year. Several other companies are working on driverless cars like Waymo, Cruise, and Zooks, but from the beginning, Tesla has taken a controversial approach. They're a camera and radar based system, whereas all full self-driving vehicles that are offered by companies like Cruise Automation and Waymo are using a combination of laser sensors called LiDAR, radar, ultrasonic sensors, infrared sensors, cameras, and incredibly powerful compute platforms. Tesla's sort of dead set on cameras for autopilot, and I, I don't know, I don't know if they can do it. 
The main reason for this is the high cost of LiDAR, which Musk has repeatedly denounced. Anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are unnecessary. Tesla says it collects data from the thousands of vehicles and drivers out on the road today and uses this to train the software behind its autopilot and full self-driving features. They will be so much further ahead than any other company because they have a million cars on the road day in and day out, potentially doing autopilot, and all that data is just being consumed into the system. New features roll out through Tesla's pioneering over-the-air updates. You wake up in the morning and you turn your car on, you go to work, and the car has new features. Autopilot initially used to only be in one lane. And then with an over-the-air update, essentially now you had Navigate on Autopilot where it will literally change lanes for you and then even take the exit for you. Their idea is that these problems are solvable and they're solvable through incremental software updates. Over the years, Tesla has switched up its driver assist features under the Autopilot and full self-driving branding. As it currently stands, Autopilot comes standard with every new Tesla that ships. Full self-driving, also known as FSD, which is still in development, is sold for $8,000. For now, it includes a few semi-autonomous capabilities, such as automatic lane changing, auto parking, and summon. While the autopilot system can be engaged anywhere, it's primarily designed to operate on highways. Turning autopilot on right now in an urban environment, it can be done, it may do okay, but it's not made to do that. We're currently testing full self-driving software for intersections and city streets and narrow streets. I, I personally test the latest alpha build of full self-driving software when I drive my car, and it is really, I think, profoundly better than people realize. It's like amazing. It's almost getting to the point where I, I can go from my house to work with no interventions, despite going through construction and widely varying uh, situations. Autopilot has become completely better from where it originally was even a year ago to where it's at now. Despite its name, Autopilot and the full self-driving features Tesla sells do not provide fully autonomous capabilities to its vehicles. When um, Tesla released these features on their website, they put a banner up that said, full self-driving capability and then a button order now. And, you know, of course, when you click through these pages on their site, there is fine print that clarifies, of course, you need to keep your hands on the wheel at all times and also be uh, paying attention, eyes on the road. The Federal Trade Commission Act in Section 5 protects consumers against unfair or deceptive practices like this. And it, it actually states that you cannot use fine print to correct potentially misleading headlines. On July 14, a Munich court ruled that Tesla misled customers on the abilities of its automated driving systems. Tesla is now banned from using the language full potential for autonomous driving and autopilot inclusive in its marketing in Germany. Of course, that doesn't apply in the US. The FTC is, seems to be giving them a break on that front. The full self-driving add-on is a moneymaker for Tesla. Customers are paying for a product that isn't complete. The yeah, complete version is already in the market for sale, even though the features are not available. He's great at turning consumers into investors as well. In July 2016, Musk outlined why the company deployed partially complete autonomy features in its cars in his Tesla Master Plan Part 2. It says when used correctly, it is already significantly safer than a person driving by themselves, and it would therefore be morally reprehensible to delay release simply for fear of bad press or some mercantile calculation of legal liability. Tesla's approach to autonomy in general is different from the rest of the industry. They've taken an approach that is really uh, based on profits while they work towards this goal of full autonomy. Tesla's autopilot features are designed to bring added levels of safety to its vehicles. So he trusted the self-driving Tesla to stay on the road until it got near a hospital. The Tesla may have saved his life. It definitely is one of the best level two systems on the road from a certain perspective. It handles many situations very, very well, but there are some shortcomings here. For the most part, I completely trust it. There's been a couple times where um, it's actually taken me out of the the way of pretty bad situations from cars swerving into my lane or um, stopping immediately. 
Musk has promoted autopilot as a safety system. In the owner's manual, it makes clear that hands should be on the wheel at all times, but Musk has retweeted people using the system inappropriately. There have been many documented instances of people abusing the system. People are really creative idiots. They're really, really good at finding ways to misuse the technology. I drive about 70 miles a day and being a young father, it's completely changed my experience of driving in that I'm no longer stressed out after an hour commute each way, if not longer. While the added safety benefits of these driver assist features have not been verified, one European organization gave it a top safety pick. However, this was because of its emergency braking features, not self-driving. Tesla used their brand name of Autopilot, but that is essentially very, very similar to other manufacturers like Volvo and Mercedes and Audi, who also produce driver assistance systems. And if there is a criticism of the Tesla system, it's probably that it's too authoritative and the driver can be lulled into a false sense of security. While many proponents credit the system for preventing crashes and making their driving experience better, there have been incidents of abuse. A man in Minnesota is blaming his car crash on Tesla's autopilot feature. A Tesla sedan in autopilot mode crashed into a parked police cruiser yesterday in Laguna Beach, California, which is in Orange County. Thousands of people in the Almaden Valley were without power tonight after a Tesla crashed into a power pole. There it is right there, sparking a fire. She was on automatic pilot when it happened. We think autopilot is misleading for any consumer who might think that autopilot means the car is self-driving. What they've been told in marketing and media, specifically by Tesla, what's been modeled to them by the founder of Tesla, Elon Musk, has been very different than the reality of what the systems actually do. My understanding of how most Tesla owners use autopilot for the most part is very engaged, but I definitely think that just like any any technology, there will be those, those people that don't and that probably are looking at their phone and um, not even looking at the road. On May 7, 2016, the first known autopilot fatality occurred when the driver of a Model S crashed into a semi-trailer crossing perpendicularly to the highway. The following month, Tesla said it was doubling down on safety features after the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced it was investigating the fatal Josh Brown crash involving autopilot. One of the biggest criticisms directed at Tesla is the lack of an effective system to ensure drivers are alert and paying attention. Ideally, we'd like to see um, all vehicles with driver monitoring systems. So this uses an infrared camera looking at the driver's eyes and gaze detection to make sure that they're watching. In Tesla's case, they've elected to forgo any head and eye tracking, any capacitive sensing. They've gone with the most basic bottom line sensing system that exists for this, which is a torque sensor. In the case of Brown or Banner, the individuals who were killed while their Tesla was on autopilot, a long flat road and they were sort of intercepted by a semi-truck. This is exactly the environment that this DMS is not designed to handle. In March 2018, an Apple engineer was killed when his Model X drove head-on into a damaged highway crash attenuator. But what struck me the most about the circumstances of this crash was the lack of system safeguards to prevent foreseeable misuses of technology. But the driver in this case, like too many others like him, was using level two automation, as if it were full automation. A month later in Japan, a Tesla Model X crashed into a group of pedestrians on the side of a highway after the car in front changed lanes and the Tesla's autopilot system failed to respond. The driver was asleep when the crash occurred and a lawsuit filed against Tesla targets the absence of a driver monitoring system and lack of safeguards against unforeseen traffic situations. And a similar circumstance resulted in a Tesla crashing into a state trooper and another car in June in Massachusetts. These are just a few examples of accidents involving Tesla Autopilot. Humans are very bad at the monitoring of monotonous automation systems. And we've seen in our research that the two things drivers really want to do with an autonomous vehicle is go to sleep or use their cell phone. 
When the fatal Uber self-driving accident occurred in Tempe in 2018, the company halted all operations of its autonomous driving program. But despite these accidents, Tesla continues to move forward. Elon Musk likes to say, you know, humans are bad drivers. Yes, this is true. But we're even worse at, at monitoring something. People get distracted, they get bored, uh, they fall asleep, all kinds of things happen. One Tesla owner we interviewed thinks the system is very safe, but it falls on the driver to educate themselves on how to properly use it. The information that you're provided for autopilot, there's a, a bunch of tutorials. And so I think the big thing is if you're a new owner, watch those videos or talk to another owner um, to make sure you fully understand what, what you're going to be doing because your initial experience will uh, be a little bit trippy. Musk and his fans believe self-driving Teslas can eventually operate as ride-hailing vehicles and moneymakers for their owners. The whole system, it, from a hardware standpoint, has been designed to, for, uh, to be a robo-taxi since basically October 2016. It's, similar, it's sort of like a combination of maybe the Uber and Airbnb model. So if you own the car, you can add or subtract it to the Tesla network, and Tesla would uh, take uh, 25 or 30% of the revenue. The plan says Tesla owners will be able to add their vehicle to a ride-hailing fleet. Despite their updates to their hardware and their software, the system is really, uh, from, from the standpoint of the entire rest of the industry, not capable and not ready for that level of automation. Musk suggested that a Tesla's value would actually increase over time as a result of autonomous capability. It's unlikely that you're going to see a situation where a um, a used vehicle becomes a lot more valuable unless they limit the supply. You know, Elon Musk said uh, in 2018 that the Model 3 was the last time he was going to bet the company on something. But he'd already made an almost bigger gamble than Model 3, and that was selling full self-driving to Tesla customers. They are promising a, a greater level of autonomy than any other autonomous drive technology company on a shorter time frame and with, with, with much cheaper hardware. There has been a long paper trail of Musk promising autonomous milestones and missing them. Sometimes I'm not on time. <laughs> but I get it done. We will offer uh, full self driving as a, as a subscription service, uh, but it will be um, probably towards the end of this year. In 2016, Elon Musk said that by the end of 2018, you'll be able to summon your car across the country. You're in LA, your car's in New York, you can press a button, the car will drive itself to you. Obviously, that hasn't happened. Musk has repeatedly said full self-driving would be feature complete by the end of 2019. While it's going to be tight, I, it, it still does appear that uh, we will be, at least in limited in, in uh, early access release of a feature complete full self-driving feature this year. As of July, full self-driving hasn't been released yet. We're extremely confident that it will be possible to do uh, a drive from your home to your office um, in, in most of the time with no interventions by the end of the year. It's a joke within the community. We call it Elon time. I think whenever he gives a date, we know it's going to be a lot later. But as far as like the things that he's mentioned, that the features that are going to happen, he's been true to this word. And Tesla has had a difficult time retaining talent on the autopilot team, which likely exacerbates the delays. Even if Tesla delivers feature-complete full self-driving, it's only the beginning of a long road to refine the technology. It's going to be decades before this happens. It's going to require technological breakthroughs in a number of different fields, uh, not only in vision, but in uh, sensing and in uh, infrastructure to really make all of this work together. And then there's the issue of regulation. Even though Musk says regulations are limiting the release, there are no limiting regulations in place. I think that if Tesla is hampered by regulations, it's likely to be outside of the United States. There's a lot of evidence over the last several years that regulations that are mandating certain technologies, especially safety technologies and vehicles, are going to become advice, not prescription. However, I think it's much more likely that regulations in other countries are going to crack down on the name autopilot, on the capabilities, perhaps the requirement for a driver monitoring system or other systems. The truth is at the end of the day, there really is no regulation holding back something like RoboTaxi 2020. Uh, it's a technological problem and it's requiring 
work on a different front that's not at all related to regulation. Everybody wants to see, you know, this technology moving forward. If Tesla's the one to do it, that's that's awesome. But when we have these accidents like uh, Brown and Banner, even the incident with Uber, even like beyond Tesla, like the greater self-driving industry is really dependent on everybody taking a good, robust, safe approach. Once we are there, I think it's really exciting to just think of what it could mean just to own a Tesla. By the time my, my son turns 18, he probably won't be learning um, how to drive in a typical gas car. Who knows, maybe he doesn't even need to take a driving test at that point. But I think we're just kind of at the beginning.